company from a networking or whatever background, but then their customer asks them, oh, can you help us out and everything doing a, a conference room design for VTC systems or something like that. So then they're not familiar enough with it. So then they get over to our team and I design like conference room systems and things of that nature for them. But uh, prior to that, I've used to be, I was a lead installer um, doing systems for either large corporations or colleges and things of that nature uh, for pro AV things. Um, I initially got introduced and everything uh, by just setting up a VTC systems actually in the military and stuff doing old Tannenberg VTC systems and everything when I was in the Marine Corps. I ended up getting out and uh, I still worked a lot on the, the military uh, side. I ended up uh, doing a lot of installs at actually the Marine Corps Special Operations Command Center and uh, designing a lot of things over there for, for their building. So. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff for JSOC. Yeah, 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 I did did a lot of stuff for them. Yeah, th those I, are those are interesting buildings. <laughs> yeah, they are. It takes a little while lot, to get in. They, they a got a lot to of money to spend guy. too, though. <laughs> it's the guy beh walking behind you with the uh, with the M16, and the guy <laughs> walking in front of you saying "unclear, unclear" as you walk through the building. That's uh, a little bit uh, disconcerting. Hey, okay, so I think we're going to just go ahead and start now. It's ten o'clock. Um, Got uh, people popping in, great. I wanna welcome people from around the world to our, our first uh, NDI webinar. Uh, first of a few, I hope. And I, I think I have a great lineup of people. I'm gonna get out of the way. I wanna introduce everybody and uh, we'll, we'll just kind of let it roll. Uh, first, we have Kane Peterson from New Tech. Uh, he's going to be the uh, eye in the sky, the, the Pro from Dover, and he's going to help us out figuring out what NDI is, what it can do, and some of the applications that we can apply. Then we have Craig Kinney from uh, Cenex. Uh, he's going to be joining us and doing a little bit of talk about how uh, Cenex Visual Solve Collab Solve Group can help facilitate and design your NDI projects. We have Jeff Kethley, uh, absolutely fantastic uh, uh, to have somebody with his. Uh, skill set and breadth of experience on to help us out with uh, you know, understanding how to deploy these uh, systems as well as how to use them, uh, how, to, how to use them in a uh, professional manner. And then we have uh, Dr. John Edelson from CSU Monterey. Uh, Dr. John's been with uh, Video360 on a couple of webinars. He is probably one of the most video centric experienced people on the planet. And uh, he's actually on one of our Saber NDI cameras right now. Um, and uh, so Dr. John will help us out with, uh, you know, figuring out what, what things look like from the user side. Of course, we do have a uh, Q and A thing. That I really want to have uh, a lot of questions answered. So we've got a great staff here and Basically, you know, Tomiko is going to help me out with, uh, you know, doing the, the uh, Q&A stuff. But in the meantime, let's uh, start with Kane. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, do your bio, do your spiel, and <laughs> let, let's hear about it. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, my name is Kane Peterson. Uh, I work for New Tech. So uh, New Tech is the company that made the NDI protocol. So uh, I've been, as you can guess, working with it for a really long time. Um, in fact, even when it was still in beta, I was one of the beta testers, uh, you know, reporting back how things were working to our development team. So I want to start off with just some uh, information about NDI. Uh, not everybody uh, in this webinar might be familiar with what NDI is or what can it do or can it do or why do I use it or, you know, kind of give you an answer to hopefully a lot of those questions you might have. So uh, NDI stands for Network Device Interface. And this is a protocol that New Tech developed for sending high quality, low latency video over computer networks. Now you might say, well, 
I can send video over computer networks. There's been other things that have done this. So what makes NDI different than maybe other things out there? So the, the differences out there with it are that it's extremely easy to use, right? We, you don't have to know things like IPs and ports to use NDI. So your average user is just selecting things off a list and video sources show up. So from an operational standpoint, it's a very easy thing for a non-network savvy user to still take advantage of. That's not to say you don't need to know some networking to implement it, but once it's implemented, it's, it's very simple for an end user to operate with. It's also very high quality. So for those of you watching me right now, I'm coming to you via NDI. I've got a camera that uh, has an NDI converter on it that sends it into one of our production systems. You know, New Tech does come more from the broadcast background. That's my virtual set with an animated graphic on it you can see in the background there. And then it's coming out of my production system as an, another NDI feed into uh, Zoom. And we have a free piece of software that will take that NDI feed and adapt it into programs like Zoom or Teams or other meeting software that you might be using, uh, BlueJeans or GoToMeeting or WebEx or any of those that you could think of would work. And that's that's how you're seeing me. So I, I you are watching me via NDI right now. Um, so those are some of the things. And then it's also low latency. Um, a lot of other video protocols that we use to send video over the network, uh, you know, you could have multiple seconds of latency in it, which can make things like a live video conference difficult, right? If, if everybody talked and then I didn't hear it for another one or two seconds, and then they didn't hear it for another one, two seconds, one or two seconds after I talked, conversation becomes very difficult. NDI only has a latency of about a frame of video. Uh, it depends upon exactly how you implement it, but a frame is a pretty safe value to use. So we can have live conversations going on or do live production or, or anything where latency becomes important. Um, you know, NDI delivers you that, that high performance. So after that, NDI, there's a, a few, few more things about NDI to let you know. Uh, it's available both in a software and a hardware version. So in a software version means that a software computer application can implement NDI. And in fact, I'm, that's what I'm using for half of my signal to, for you to watch me. The application that takes the NDI feed and turns it into Zoom is all running in software. It's just a, a free computer application you install on a PC. It picks up that NDI feed and feeds it in as a webcam. So Zoom itself doesn't think that it's taking an NDI. It just thinks it's a webcam. It just happens to be my webcam is being fed by NDI uh, in. But we also have hardware versions of NDI. So this is one of our uh, Spark boxes. This is made uh, by NewTek. There's other companies that make products like this, like Bird Dog, Magewell, KiloView. So we are not the only ones that do it, but certainly since we made NDI, we're one of the ones that have it. And this allows you to take traditional video equipment. We have both ones with SDI and HDMI. Uh, this happens to be an SDI one. And I could plug in a traditional video source, turn it into NDI, or I can take an NDI source and turn it back in traditional video. So if you have equipment that is not NDI enabled, but you need to be able to connect it in with all of your NDI other stuff that you have, there's certainly boxes you can get uh, to do that as well. So again, it's available in software, it's available in hardware, these are cross compatible, but it gives you lots of ways that you can implement NDI from computer applications to, uh, you know, hardware boxes to convert uh, traditional devices. The last thing I don't want to mention about NDI is that we have a free set of software that you can download called NDI Tools. And for anybody who's not worked with NDI before, but you're kind of like, I'd like to try this out and see what it's like. And, you know, does my network work? You know, well, how does it look? What is the performance? You know, I, I want to try those things and get my own hands dirty trying it. Our NDI tools package allows you to do that. And so you can go to ndi.tv, which is uh, the website for NDI, download NDI tools for both your Mac or your PC. They are cross compatible. And this will install a variety of applications on your computers that will either generate NDI signals or receive NDI signals. So you can start sending these around your facility and seeing what it can do. And this can let you share computer screens, um, generate video feeds. Uh, I can play video clips out and turn them into NDI. Uh, I can receive NDI and look at it. And so let me just quickly show you one example application. So this gives you a better idea what NDI kind of looks like to an end user. So this is probably the most uh, popular package out of the NDI tools pack, which is called NDI Studio Monitor. This is uh, allows me to view 
NDI feeds that are on my network. And you can see by clicking on this icon, these are all the NDI sources that are, are on my local network right here. So you can see I've got a few different devices all generating signals out here. And so for example, uh, I could go pick, um, this is my camera. So the the camera that's got a hardware converter on it, right? You can see this is the raw feed coming off that camera before I remove the green screen and put the background behind there and stuff. So you can see I can pull that into my computer, but just to show one other example, here is a PTZ camera that I happen to have. And so you can see there's the PTZ, you can kind of see a little bit more around me, like an alternate angle of my little space here, but I also have the PTZ control so I can move the camera around and, you know, see what I'm doing in there. So this gives you just a better idea of what kind of things NDI allows you to do uh, when you're uh, using it, right? You just, you go into an application, you pick things off a list. That's pretty much all you need to know. You don't need to know what the IP or what the port is or what kind of transmissions going on. It's literally just, oh, I need that source select it. You can even often name these sources. So you can give them very human readable, usable names so that things make sense when you're selecting them off the list. So I hope that gives a good kind of little snapshot of what NDI is and kind of how it works and looks and you know how it's available. I'm sure there'll be more questions and some of them will probably be answered by some of the other uh, people in this meeting, but uh, I will turn it over to whoever is next here, but hopefully that gives you a good snapshot about NDI. I wanted to thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> people see NDI and they think, oh, well, it's going to be too confusing. And and I actually felt that that way. So I'm always, always uh, constantly trying to learn new things anyway. And when I picked up the NDI tools, I went, oh, wow, this is really easy to do. And I was able to do the, the controls and on our, our Sabre 20 camera, it, it worked just perfectly right out of the box. Um, I even bought a cheap gaming joystick and started playing with that. And I plugged in a joystick and now I'm able to control and move the camera around just using a, a $30 gaming joystick. It was kind of silly. So yeah, I thought it was really pretty cool. So I think I want to have uh, Craig jump in real quick here. Craig, uh, if you want to introduce yourself and Maybe we'll talk a little bit about what uh, the Visual Solve group can do and you know how we can uh, you know leverage the expertise that you guys have over there at Cenex, which is pretty deep. Yep. So my name is Craig Keeney. I work with uh, Cenex. And for those of you that might be unfamiliar with Cenex, we are an IT distribution company. I specifically work in the pre-sales uh, tech support side. And so anybody that might be coming over into us, we offer and leverage free support and everything for our resellers that might be unfamiliar in some areas, whether that be in pro AV server design and things of that nature, uh, they can call in and our email into us and we will help configure them a, a whole design for that meets their needs and everything at no cost to you. Um, so when this comes over into a uh, pre-sales design for AV, we do typically anything from regular conference rooms where NDI is concerned. NDI has really taken off of, uh, for us recently, especially in COVID, just because uh, now with all the houses of worship and everything that are no longer able to get their people inside, we've been getting, a, we got a whole bunch of requests in for being able to stream their sermons and things of that nature. So we started uh, putting in uh, and designing NDI systems for a lot of houses of worship and everything where that started becoming very popular for us. And if you and yourselves uh, need uh, help uh, designing systems or anything of that nature, you can always come out and reach out to uh, us at uh, ProAV, uh, ProAV at, at Cenex.com and uh, we can help uh, design and get systems for you. I really wish I had as cool as a setup as Kane Peterson with uh, <laughs> the green screen and better lighting and things of that nature. I recently moved myself a month ago and the lighting and things in my room are not necessarily as great. I see all these nice professional setups and stuff and I was just like, I got kind of a, a dark uh, feature and stuff here, but um, hopefully, 
if you do need any support and everything from us for designing any of your needs, whether it be for our Pro AV and NDI, we're definitely here to help support you. Well, obviously, uh, you know, here, here at BDO360, we will help you get a better video background going. Uh, Jeff, I'd like to, to have you pop in a little bit. Uh, Jeff Kethley's with Pizzazz. They have extensive experience with using NDI and uh, as well as designing and installing systems. So um, the Jeff would be a really good person to address some of the challenges they've seen, some of the solutions they've found, and uh, maybe we can uh, get a little more information there. Sure thing, sure thing. I'm glad to be a part of this. Uh, good to see a few friendly faces that I've seen many times before. That that voice that I heard, uh, I could actually turn off my monitor and I could hear Kane's voice forever because uh, if you haven't done it yet, go to New Tech and get into their training. And Kane has done a phenomenal job getting that information out there about the goodness of NDI. Uh, it, it is very, very helpful. And so if you're, especially if you're looking for the more technical details, there's, there's the NDI training that is there that is invaluable. Very, very, very invaluable. And uh, as far as a little history behind uh, what we do and who I am, I, I'm the owner of two different businesses. One is uh, Pizzazz, which is a system integration business. We've been working with New Tech for a little over 20 years now. I've been in business for over 35, though. I come from the production background. I come from broadcast, and that is where my other company is Live Sports, is uh, firmly in the sporting industry. And uh, we basically do a lot of uh, professional tennis and other racket sports. We've kind of found a niche in that market. Uh, we were been doing about eight or nine years until March. Of course, there's not been a whole lot since then. Uh, just a few, uh, very few events uh, in November and then just recently one down in Florida uh, in the first of, of January, January. Sorry, now that we're in February, we're still looking to fill the schedule as things move forward. But our other side of the business is the system integration and it is just blown up. And NDI is absolutely a huge key to that success. Um, we, we found ourselves because of our very unique way of doing production in our, in our live sporting events where we were off, uh, basically we were doing a distributed workflow about three years ago. And so when I say distributed workflow, meaning I had camera operators that were in a completely different state across the country operating cameras that were on site. And NDI is what allowed us to do that. Uh, and then we moved, the next step was graph, well, graphics actually was first, then we moved to cameras. The system controls, the, the ability to control all our, our switchers, every piece that we have, our audio mixer, everything, it's all IP controllable. And so that is one of the things that we really were pushing already before COVID hit. Whenever everybody's like, hey, I could do this remotely. I was like, yeah, I've been there, done that. So we're, we're, we're moving further, further ahead is moving this all into a more scalable means, which is basically means cloud. And so we've been scaling uh, considerably in the last year, year and a half, and moving our production workflow more and more into the cloud. And, and, and as the time came along, whenever we didn't have events to do ourselves, we started reaching out, uh, our clients started reaching out to us and, and asking us how to help them implement it. Uh, one of our recent clients was using completely virtual and NDI was right in the center of making everything work, both in audio and video. Uh, NDI was being used for the Drone Racing League, which was live on NBC. That is, that was a game changer. It's like we built a workflow with them, completely did all their production. They had all their pilots, which are their players. Now, this was a sim. It wasn't live drones, but they were building a simulator, and they, so it was like a game. They would build that out, and they had machines at each one of the, the pilots' locations that would feed back into the cloud. Via NDI in the cloud, we were able to move those video signals around four or five different video production switchers and then it went out via srt was the last mile i guess you would call it into the nbc ingest and it was live on nbc who would have thought that we were able to do that a year ago much less five years ago so i i would say that yes ndi has definitely changed our workflow immensely and we couldn't be where we are now without it yeah, you know, if I can ask you, Jeff, what um, 
What challenges did you find in deploying NDI in the first place? Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we're talking about IP, so we're talking, you know, cloud issues. You know, we have, uh, you know, firewalls to traverse. The, there's a lot of backend stuff that maybe some of our uh, our viewers might be interested in what you found were the challenges and what were some of the, the sure. solutions, if you, if you don't mind sharing. Oh, no, not at all. No, no, no. Yeah, the, the, the biggest part of the challenges is understanding basic networking procedures. Um, a lot of people, because of the bursting networking nature that whenever you want to go to a website, you send out a small request that sends the data back to you. Everybody thinks, oh, my internet's working fine then. But whenever you start doing NDI or any kind of audio or video over IP, you're sending a continuous stream of information. And so it start, you start seeing the weak spots in your network at that point. It, it could be that I might have, and I'm guilty of it too. It's like maybe I had a cable that wasn't exactly right, and I was only getting a 10-100 uh, type of signal into that NIC, into the network adapter, well, NDI broke that right? because whenever I went to push NDI down that path, it was not enough. And it's like, oh, well, then, oh, okay, well, I need to change the cable. I'm back up to gigabit. Everything's happy. So, but when you're just sending out simple requests for the web or checking emails and then simple stuff, it's not as, as, as I give you say, as apparent to everybody that, that something's wrong. And so... A big part of that is also in the switches, in the networking infrastructure, the gateways, the routers, all those pieces kind of come together. So whenever you don't have the proper design workflow from A to Z, then something in the middle is going to hold you up. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges is knowing that it takes a little bit more than just a basic $45 switcher switch to be able to use NDI. It may take a little bit, but it's not a lot more. Maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty, but the but it's not like you you don't have to spend like for Simpty twenty one ten. You don't have to spend ten thousand dollars on a switch, but you do have to have the right switch, and that's a big part that's hard to understand. You know, I think that's probably where the expertise from people like Craig over at Visual Solve, and um, I think that's where they can really help the deployment is obviously, you know, we sell a camera uh, that, that works in India. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. But from there, you know, frankly, we don't move the rest of that equipment. We don't have any insight into that. And people like Craig and Kane and, and yourself, you know, the, you're, you're great resources uh, for people to be able to rely on when it comes to deploying this stuff out smoothly and comfortably. I think, uh, you know, Jeff, if you don't mind, I'm gonna jump over to John real quick uh, and and let him uh, explain to him, explain to us a little bit of his challenges today. And, and again, John, please introduce yourself, what you do and tell people that you're not actually, you know, just, just a magic guy in front of his gray screen. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm John Idelson. I'm a professor emeritus at California State University, Monterey Bay. And the emeritus part means I'm failing retirement. Um, it's, it's always hard to follow Jeff, though. You know, he's uh, quite a star on NDI, and he and I have been on a number of other panel shows. But uh, my area was instructional technology, uh, use of technology, teaching and learning, and focusing a lot on remote learning. And uh, this video, diff video conferencing stuff, for me is old hat. I My first video conference was in 1978 over RCA uh, Globesat with slow scan television. So the rest of you guys are a little late to the party. Um, but uh, what's interesting is, you know, you, you talk about things converging or diverging. And I was sort of thinking, you know, that you, you come up to a road and there's three of them, you have to decide where you're gonna go. My background, those three roads have come together uh, in at Monterey, I work very closely with our uh, cable access channel, which does public broadcasting of city council meetings and the like. And our uh, cable access channel was one of the first uh, to start using um, new tech equipment uh, for their switching of their uh, their meetings. So knew a lot about new tech and what it could do for the um, uh, public access television. Um, obviously, with 
COVID, we're doing a lot of video conferencing and we're trying to repurpose our campus. So I got called out of uh, uh, retirement uh, to help with the campus and trying to figure out how to get cameras wired into rooms and doing things. And there was a lot of networking cable there, but not so many um, cables for uh, HDMI or uh, SDI. So the ability to be able to place some cameras in rooms and be able to access the video and be able to get it into uh, video conferencing tools such as uh, Zoom. They all, this has all sort of come together. It's sort of amazing how these groups that were used and tools that were used you know, in broadcasting and in industrial settings and have all sort of had to converge to really help make the uh, the global communication that we're doing through video conferencing work during COVID. I guess for for Jeff, yeah, you know, when I see Jeff and you, the last thing you showed us, you had 16 NDI cameras going to 15, 16 different locations, and I'm jealous. Jealous. I'm just trying to get one NDI camera from across the room into my Zoom conference, and uh, I have have to you know talk about the network. I I'm not on NDI at this moment. I'm the day we're recording this, uh, I live in Monterey, California, and if you've seen some pictures of Highway 1, we've had a little bit of rain in this area. So my primary network at home and everything does NDA, NDI fine, and if, if I break up, it's not the system, it's my network, I'm on my backup network, which I had not used NDI before, and as you said, you, you got to find those weak links in it. And to me, that's the, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, when it works, it works like a charm, but uh, it, sometimes it can uh, sort of give you a little bit of uh, a hiccup uh, to get things going. But uh, in educational settings, I think this is one of the real opportunities of being able to place cameras, control them, uh, route them and get them into uh, the video conferencing systems that we're currently using to do remote education, both in higher ed and K-12. You know, speaking of which, uh, speaking of uh, education, we have uh, Tom Capone is uh, uh, from New York Distance Learning Association. He uh, raised his hand, wants to ask a question. I'm going to go ahead and let, let Tom pop in here, give him a little heads up right now so he knows that he's going to be talking in just a second. But he may have a question for us on this, and uh, let's see what Thomas, say. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I just was wondering, you know, because we have both public sector, private sector, uh, you know, clientele, and in our in our community, is is there any one best way, you know, to uh, to educate, you know, that this that this is available and this is. Uh, this is something that that they have access to. I'm I'm looking for the, uh, you know, for the way to best market via learning, if you will. You know, that, that's probably a, a good time for uh, uh, Craig to jump in or uh, or Kane. Actually, you know, those are the guys that'll be facing the customers uh, in most cases. You know, so uh, Craig or Kane, you, you feel like you uh, want to address that? Um, I, I guess I'll start. I mean, certainly education is a big area that new tech, uh, you know, has products in. Uh, admittedly, our background is more from the broadcast side. So usually when we see this kind of stuff happening, it's kind of coming out of the broadcast AV, you know, people department in there. Um, it's probably an area that honestly, we probably need to focus more on uh, just in a general sense, because I mean, it really could be used, as you're saying, in so many other ways and in so many other departments. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, you, you go with what you know, and, and new tech makes switchers and instant replay systems and, you know, uh, cameras and converters and stuff. So we've really focused mostly on that side of the market, but certainly AV uh, in general has been an area of, of focus as of late. So uh, I don't know specifically if we have any collateral uh, that is targeted specifically at education, we, we might, uh, that I don't deal with that side of the, the company, but um the, the, the probably the, the main thing I would say, at least the hook I always use to get people, again, is at NDI tools. Uh, if you can get somebody to start playing around with it, 
that kind of just starts to unlock the ideas and all of a sudden, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Oh my God. You know, all of a sudden it's like, I could do these other things and it just grows and grows from there. And uh, there's, there's other free NDI tools out there besides just NDI tools itself. But that's a, that's a probably a good starting point for people. Well, I want to ditto what uh, Jeff said about your trainings, because when I wanted to get up with my NDI, I went to your videos and they are great. And they work particularly well for me because my undergraduate degree, this, this gray beard, this only wasn't that long ago. They did have television then, although I did have a two inch quad machine that I uh, learned on. Um, so for me, your broadcast heritage you know, wasn't any of an issue. But I think that's where some of the challenges are, particularly um, as we're using this tool in ways that I think you never thought it would happen. And you look at Zoom, Zoom was designed primarily for businesses and enterprise, and then it became a consumer product and you know, how to train and teach it forward. And I think that this is the challenge that I see, particularly when I'm working with educators who are trying to up their game to, uh, to get good audio, get good video so their students can hear it and do it in a way where uh, they can get some help. They don't have to be a one armed wall paper hanger. You know, the, the fact that you could remotely control a camera, you could give a graduate assistant uh, something you could do, uh, do with that. We actually have some demonstrations of people using cameras remotely in labs, uh, one in Princeton where they then they took the camera control and have it operate a device. But there's a difference between those. I, I used to say I'm an analog cowboy in a digital world. Um, there's a difference between those uh, people who were in analog television, coax and cables, and IT people. And for them to do that cross pollination is sometimes hard to do. And then when you throw an academic into it, uh, although I love academics because I are one, but um, when you throw that into it, it, it's a little harder to deal with. And I, I think the challenge here, and I've seen it work real well, is getting it out to the public through simple things like uh, you have your apps, but there's simple iPhone apps that let you get NDI. And if you could solve the network problems, I think this is where we see the biggest problems because uh, I won't say anything bad about cable companies or phone companies. Uh, we've all had our four hour window, which turned to be four weeks when they showed up. But um, it does show the weaknesses. You, you have to have a good continuous network for it to work. They're not hard to do, but that's been the biggest challenge I've had is that it works perfectly. In fact, it will work perfectly at a friend's house who taught them how to hook this all up and they go to their house and it doesn't work. And when they do their network test, they go, oh, I'm getting so-and-so up and so-and-so down because that's what my cable company says the network is. And then when you really analyze what the network is, it's not quite adequate to do the continuous flow. You know, Craig, you know, if you don't mind, what do you see uh, the number one questions that new, uh, new customers for NDI uh, products, what are, they, what are they asking you? What are, and what are they not asking you? Maybe that's even more important is uh, what are they assuming that they have without, uh, without actually having good quality stuff? Typically, uh, some of the first questions that uh, come about when they're asking is, will my network be able to handle this? Um, am I gonna need to purchase new switches? Am I going to need to get this on a whole separate network possibly? And um, Unfortunately, I can't give them a good answer always right away. <laughs> it's definitely, it depends on uh, like what, what's already currently on there, how maxed out their switches are, the, the whether or not some of their switches are able to do certain protocols like uh, jumbo packets and things of that nature. Um, but then there's other simple, simpler questions like, can I possibly uh, get some of my cameras that I currently have that don't do NDI out of the box? but get them and everything on the network and everything to transmit NDI. And, and unfortunately, yes, and everything, there are ways in, in to do that. Um, as far as from an educational standpoint, uh, for the question that was asked, before COVID hit, 
Cinex actually invested in an educational video platform called Talent LMS. And we started uploading uh, video content about some of our services, our vendors and product lines and things of that nature uh, to start being able to educate uh, more of our resellers in areas that they may not actually be familiar in. Uh, unfortunately, none of us are in the office anymore, and some of those uh, video projects have stopped and getting uploaded, but we had actually just done a full-out production room in our uh, office building here in Greenville, South Carolina, and everything to help uh, promote some of that. So hopefully, once some more of us actually start getting back into the office, we'll actually be able to make some educational video content about NDI and getting that on the Talent LMS platform to start educating more people about the capabilities of it and where it can go and actually help them. Well, you're gonna have a resource to, to tap on right here with all these great people on the panel, that's for sure. Um, Kane, what, what do you see as, uh, you know, you know, I'm trying to figure out how, how a customer, would, when they're first thinking about doing NDI, what what kind of questions are going to have? Obviously, Craig put out the, uh, you know, what does my network look like? But the other part of it is, you know, okay, so let's go do some network analysis. There's, I'm sure there's great tools for doing that. But the other part of it is, is the uh, uh, the users so that the you know what level are the users at, and how do we how do we analyze that really? I mean, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it, sometimes it's hard to understand just what you don't know. Like with me, I don't know a lot about NDI, but I'm I, I think I get what you're asking. Yeah. I, I mean, there, there's the aspect of, of the network, but then I think there's the aspect of the workflow and the users, right? The people right. who are going to make the thing do what it is that it's up to do. And, uh, you know, I actually, um, I, I know I, I make the new tech you material, you know, some of the other gentlemen have talked about, and I, I thank you for that. You, you found it so helpful and useful. Um, but my, actually my main job at new tech is really, uh, I'm on the professional services team. So, uh, when customers buy our equipment, I'm somebody who can be, uh, basically, uh, added in, I guess, if they want to pay for those additional services to help them implement workflows, because I mean, you know, I, since I focus on our stuff, I know our stuff inside and out. Plus I kind of have the ear of developers and stuff. So I can sometimes even get, you know, information or get things added that, uh, you know, uh, we, we need specifically, but, you know, that gets into, um, you know, finding out what the workflow is. What are you truly trying to accomplish uh, so that, you know, we can make sure we're putting the right pieces in place uh, around it all. And then um, automation has really become another big aspect of it, right? People are continuously trying to get more done with less equipment. Um, so how can we automate functions How can, or remote production that's been mentioned as well? How can we get people to assist from areas where, you know, hey, they can't be in the office, they can't be in the studio, but they still want to help. How can we uh, set that kind of stuff up? So that's been an area that I've certainly been helping out with a lot, um, you know, helping people set up better for remote productions, helping people automate their productions more so we can have, you know, dissimilar systems talk to each other and, you know, make things, you know, hey, I can make a macro that when I do this triggers that other thing over there to do its thing at the same time. So I don't have to, uh, you know, try to control this and then run over there and control that type of thing. So I, I think that's been, at least from my experience, what uh, um, comes up a lot when, I, when I'm talking to people. You know, it's, um, yeah, again, it's the, we don't know what we don't know. Um, you know, so how do we, how do we get to the, 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 the and John brings up a great thing with the, the academic space. How do we, get people to understand just what kind of power this this, uh, this distributed network idea can do you know um, you know that's going to be your new name in this thing uh, network distribution <laughs> ideas. Um, so you know I think that uh, Jeff probably has a, a good insight on when somebody comes to him and says you know I want to do this this and this he's already thinking and in the new tech manner, but 
I mean, how do we get people to, to say what they want? I mean, that is, that is honestly the biggest challenge. It, it always, we, we call it scope creep because they're like, okay, so what's the scope of your project? Okay, great. We can do this, this, and this, and solve that. And then it's the, well, what about this? Uh, oh, and, oh yeah, I want to have a video uh, output over here. And, you know, it would really be nice if we had a, an extra monitor over here. And I'm not talking about in the same room. You know, of course, it's across the building or across the campus uh, in, a, in an academic uh, scenario. And then once they start using the tools... That's when we get the call back. Like, okay, so you know how you mentioned about being able to use the basketball cameras there to do that production, but I don't have to be there? That's a thing now. I need to be able to control that from across the campus, across the network, across, uh, you know, umpteen miles of cable and fiber and such. We need to be able to do that. Is this NDI thing going to allow us to do that? And then the deeper conversations with IT start. <laughs> much, much deeper conversations. Um, because they're just not set up for that right away. But, but we can help them get there. It's just a matter of once people see what you could do with NDI on, on premise, your mind just starts saying, oh, I could be doing this. I could save time by putting cameras over there or just have plugs that I just walk over, I plug in. And then I'm live, but my control system that used to be in a fly pack or a rolling cart, it never has to move anymore. They just put cameras over there and operators. Or sometimes in our case, in, in our live sports, we don't even put operators over there. We just go set out the cameras, walk back, and uh, enjoy the AC so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, you have, a, you have a different animal there in that <laughs> a lot of your people, you're trying to convince them that, NDI works over the network. Mm. They already know what a good camera is. They know what lighting is. They know exactly. they're gonna, the, the challenge that, that we have, and I think Kane probably is a challenge for you is, uh, you know, people say, well, NDI, NDI doesn't work. And I go, well, it, it might help if you actually know where the ON OFF switch is with your camera. Uh, and then Dan, I, I love my camera because I, I like the, the fiddle with it, you know, do the exposure, do the front focus, back focus. And I'm sure the next person who uses this camera and plugs it in is going to say it doesn't work because I have tweaked it for my room. Right. Um, uh, Jeff and I are on a, a group called Alex Lindsay's Office Hours, where at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we looked a little bit like Craig, the witness protection program, although your light's coming up a bit, they, they must be releasing you. Um, but a lot of the challenges then is you can even get the cameras or the microphones or the lights because of the supply chain. And that's, Dan, it's amazing what you were able to do in terms of getting cameras when almost everybody was out of them. But to me, that's the, the bigger issue is that, uh, Kane, probably on your website, you need uh, not only your, your NDI tools, which I, that's how I learned about it, but somebody, you know, before you even use NDI tools, you have to have an NDI camera and the camera, you know, needs to get the light reflected off of the subject and hopefully off the subject, but not behind the subject um, and, and things like that. And, and, and then there are some hiccups in this that don't really work as well. Audio is always a challenge with NDI. And then, Jeff, we, we've heard people talk about, you know, uh, Dante and audio and how do you, right. how do you get that? Yeah, I was using Dante well before I even got into NDI. I was I was sitting there with Dr. Cross at New Tech showing him our Dante workflow. And I'm like, I want something that works like this, but video. And he just smiled at me and goes, that's a pretty good idea. And just kept <laughs> smiling. And then like a month later, he rolls out NDI and goes, hey, you might want to check this out. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. And that's exactly the part of the things that we have to solve is in, in overall workflows. But it, it's the same thing in any broadcast uh, scenario. You may have an analog mic that you have to either one convert it to to Dante or you have to convert it to Matty if it's if you're in a broadcast truck that uses Matty. So conversion's nothing new. We're just converted it to another format. That's all. Just another name and another format. Right. But if I'm trying to do this to a college professor who's working remotely. I have a hard time, you know, getting to go, well, you need to get your HDMI output of a camera and put it through a dongle 
and plug it into how, how, how do you spell your HDMI? How do you spell that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that we we get a lot of uh, we have to put ourselves in the shoes sometimes of uh, people that haven't been doing this for a long time. Um, and, and then obviously, you know, we could probably you know, gather around in a group uh, that to, I don't know, you know, we could, we can go into the weeds really quickly. And unfortunately, most of our newer customers won't be able to follow us there. So perhaps, you know, one of our challenges is, you know, to, to break down how to progress into an NDI world uh, with, um, with small, small words, I guess. We'll, you know, we'll use it this, that way. I'm trying to be nice about saying it. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have our experience, that, that don't understand, okay, well, you know, NDI is going to go over the IP network and it's a way of transmitting video. Well, okay, great. That makes sense to us. But to somebody that may be an academic that is just trying to get their, their students to, you know, view something going on across campus, they don't understand it. They don't care. They yeah, just want to do it. It's even not only, uh, obviously, the students and faculty may be the uh, most novice users because they weren't in the broadcast market, but we're working with our convention center, local convention center, and people aren't there. But it was built with very good uh, networking capabilities. And, um, you know, so it's getting the event planners and whoever their production people are to realize that they can load in in a different way and have people operate in a different way. And if, if we have if we have an event coming up uh, where we're going to use the convention center and we're limited to seven people in the room and it's sort of you know, like who gets to go into, in, in, into the room and, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the old guy. I'm the gray beard here. You know, I'm, I want to be as far away from people as I possibly can. <laughs> and, and so for me to let me, you know, be able to control something remotely and, and the, the people I was working with, they, they wanted me in the room because uh, the crew was a much younger crew. And the, the woman who was in charge of said, you need to be there because you're more experienced. And I was trying to explain that the younger crew is better than me. And uh, I said, in fact, I'm better remotely because I can do more things. I, in the room, I, when fires happen, I can't jump up. I'll distract the speakers. Um, but it, it's there's a lot of teaching, learning opportunities. But there's a high motivation. You know, there's lots of people who are looking for new skills or making sure their staff can be employed. You know, it's uh, the. The technology is fantastic. I think what our biggest problem in the market is um, people not wanting to learn new stuff. You know, frankly, you know, I, I like learning new things, but I'm finding that I'm maybe an exception to the rule for a lot of folks. So we have, uh, you know, we have that as a the challenge. Um, hey, you know, we're getting to about 15 minutes left on this thing. I want to make sure that we're getting some Q&A stuff answered too at the same time that we're you know, talking about uh, how, to, how to deploy this, how to address it. Um, somebody, uh, William Arnold, uh, wanted to address the security around NDI. Should this be on a separate VLAN? Is there encryption? Uh, Kane and Jeff probably are the best to, to uh, address those things. Sure, so I, I could start with that, that one. Uh, there, there is not encryption on NDI, um, <clears throat> but for being on a separate VLAN or a separate network, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I recommend that to people in general um, for some of the reasons Jeff's talking about, right? You might have a network and it's perfectly fine for running email and transferring files and, you know, uh, browsing the web and stuff, but it might not be up to what NDI needs, which is that continuous flow uh, of information. So when somebody comes to me and says, well, you know, should I just put it on the network I have or should I build a new one? I, I'm gonna be honest, I usually say, if it was me, I'd build the new one, right? I would make a dedicated network. Now, that is not a requirement. I'm not trying to say that it absolutely has to be that way. You can certainly make, and we do have people using their house network to send NDI traffic on it. But of course, at that point, then we really have to make sure that IT 
of whoever we're dealing with is involved, right? That they're going to uh, allow these connections, make any adjustments that are necessary. It is certainly possible for them to block the ports that NDI is using. And if we can't get them to unblock them, well, traffic is not gonna flow and there's nothing we can do about that unless they're willing to, to work with us on it. So uh, I know sometimes we, we butt heads with IT, but uh, you know, we do have to look at it as well as to, well, where is this gonna go? And you know, is it gonna be easier for us just to have our own network that we can control and adapt specifically for our needs or is IT willing to, uh, to work with us and make any adjustments and changes on there? So. Uh, I, hopefully, that, one last thing I'll just say, we do have, while there is no encryption, we do have a feature in NDI called groups, and you can actually create groups that uh, give you a way to segment uh, uh, sources from each other. So um, at least when you go in and you select your list, you only see what else is in your group. So if it's more of a matter of, you know, hey, I just don't want to see everything on the network. I want to see what's appropriate for me. Uh, NDI grouping will certainly allow you to have that kind of flexibility. And you can have devices that are part of even multiple groups simultaneously. So, uh, you know, you could have one system that three different people have access to uh, if, if that was the need. You know, um, you know, another part of the NDI, and I think one of the more fascinating things for me, Ian, is the availability of uh, displays that are coming out that are NDI capable as well. So now we can take, you know, a source a camera, and then throw it out to a display. But we can also do digital signage. So now we can have digital signage working off of different things. You know, your, your virtual background behind you, frankly, Jeff, could be a digital sign. I mean, we could uh, use that through, uh, through a TriCaster. There's a lot of different things that we can do with this. Um, you know, Jeff, do you, what do you suggest is for people that are looking at using NDI to distribute out to, you know, let's say a campus? For sure, whenever you start down that path, for sure, you have to make sure you have the right network in place. Because at that point when you're talking about mass dis distribution, you need multicast capability. And that is something that a lot of uh, network IT people will, will prevent you from doing multicast on a network because it's usually a tactic of those that are not trying to do good things. So um, multicast enabled network is a better way to manage the amount of data because otherwise it's the NDI feeds are in a unicast workflow, which means they are basically point to point. And so with multicast, it's it, the switches help and you take some of the uh, weight off of the network from the device. And so the proper network design, even more key. What if the IT guy is not your best friend? It's okay. You need to make him like second best, though, for sure. You know, and, and bringing that up, we do have some questions coming in. Uh, Tomiko, do you want to read some of these out, starting with Matt's? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Matt Boyer says, "I come. I came on a little late. What is the uh, codec type and bandwidth usage?" Um, so NDI is actually available in two different uh, flavors, I guess as I would call them. There's what's called high bandwidth NDI. Um, that uses a codec that is, uh, it's its own custom codec, I guess you could say, but it's very similar to like ProRes or DNX HD for anybody who's ever worked with those codecs. It's uh, that same discrete cosine transform type um, compression. Um, so that's what that one uses. Bandwidth wise, it depends upon the video uh, format, right? The size of the frame and the, uh, the frame rate as to what the bandwidth will be. But for typical HD, you know, 1080 HD type uh, signals, we usually use 100 megabits as a rough number uh, for, for calculation. It is variable bit rate. So, uh, you know, the detail in the frame is really kind of determined like how close to that hundred are we gonna use, right? So if you're just shooting a, a blank wall, it's gonna be much less, but if it's something of a high detail, uh, certainly you, you could be approaching that hundred megabits or so. And certainly it can go higher than that if you're doing like 4K or high frame rate or stuff like that as well. There's also a version of NDI called NDI HX. 
And HX uses either an H.264 or H.265 compression. Um, so that's much, much lower data rate. We're usually talking anywhere like below 20 in most cases. Although again, it depends upon a little bit of the, the device and the frame rate and the video format and stuff. Some can go a little higher, but generally 20 is usually, you know, a high number for NDI HX. Um, so those are the two that you can kind of uh, work with. Um, and, you know, there's different products you can get that can offer the different types. So this, this comes into play things like, you know, maybe your, maybe your network is not gigabit everywhere, right? In that case, going with an HX device is definitely going to be an advantage because you can still get that to fit through uh, even a hundred base T network, or maybe even Wi-Fi in some cases, not that I recommend Wi-Fi in general, but we do occasionally have people try to do it. Um, whereas the high bandwidth NDI, that really needs gigabit minimum to operate reliably. If, if it's not that, it's just, there's not gonna be enough bandwidth to send the, uh, the packets through. You know, as a little sales pitch, hey, the uh, Sabre or Sabre 20 camera is an NDI HX camera. So it will work in those uh, more ch uh, network challenged areas. Um, we have uh, Kira Novak. Uh, raised her hand over on the participant side. We'll let Kira, Kira talk really quick and see where'd you go. Up oh, there, Kira, can you hear us? Uh, she's muted on her side. She uh, just texted oh, and said that she, she was a mistake. She uh, butt dialed you. No worries, no worries. Um, so let's see, we have uh, some more questions here. Uh, Bill Memes, Don Bailey, Conrad Kabuska. Um, so let's let's go ahead and start with Bill's, Tomiko. Bill wants to know if there is a primer for production text to use when they're trying to understand the best way to address NDI needs within the production environment, because he's learning to speak IT. Um, I mean, we do have a, a white paper document that, that does give you some kind of like basic info. I'll admit it's a, not as current as it probably should be, although everything in it is still valid. It just, you know, probably needs to be updated for the, the latest info and stuff. So that's, uh, that's certainly something worth uh, um, you know, looking into. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, I guess if, if you're talking more from a standpoint of networking, um, really, you know, what you need more is not even NDI specific, it's just general networking, you know, IPs, gateways, DNS, how these things interact uh, out there. And uh, you can find video. And in fact, I'll, I'll just, if anybody has not seen it, there is a, a video series you can watch on YouTube uh, made by Yamaha. Um, uh, Jeff, uh, I, I don't remember the guy's name. I think it starts with Jeff, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he talks about basic networking with a Dante orientation, although to be honest, it's, it's, it's basic networking, right? It's just, he did it for Dante, but it applies to anything. It is the best intro to IP networking primer I have ever seen. And I would recommend anybody go find that on YouTube. It's a great way just to learn about uh, the basics of, of computer networking. And if you know that, and you kind of understand that, it, uh, he, he describes it well. If you can kind of speak the language of your IT people, you're gonna get more buy-in from them because then they kind of know that you understand a little bit what you're talking about. And the, you know, the conversation can kind of go on. Whereas if you're just kind of like, I, I just, you know, you just use these generic terms or wrong terms for thing, then the IT department a little bit like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about I, I don't know if i want to let their stuff on our network right because he's kind of like saying things that just don't match up so I, I get where he's coming from but that that's probably a good place to start and, and unless one, one of the other colleagues here have a a, a different uh oh i i completely uh, agree with kane uh one of the the best uh, learning series that i've got all everybody that works for me goes through it is the dante certification and so there's three levels of Dante certification. It is free and it's from Audinate. It is, it, there's just like those uh, YouTube videos. It is a fantastic way to get your beginnings, get your foot, your footing and get to the basics of networking and understanding it. And then whenever you do talk to the IT guy, without a doubt, if you know what you're, he understands what you're saying, you understand what he's saying, you're, you're already halfway there. There's just that stake in the, you know, case of beer that just helps put it over the top. 
Yeah, we did have somebody uh, just ask, what was that network video again that you were speaking on, Kane? Um, if you can uh, just help maybe guide somebody to that, that would help out a lot. Uh, I'll see if I can find it and post a link in the, uh, the chat for people. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. We had uh, it... Don Bailey asked a question here. Hey, Don Bailey wants to know how NDI handles an HDCP source. Uh, this is Kane again. So uh, this is a very common question and uh, there's a lot behind it, but I, I, the simple answer is that uh, it is not going to accept HDP sources. Now, there, there are reasons for that. And the main reason being is that for the, the company that releases the keys for you to build HDCP client, uh, uh, compliant devices has restrictions on how what your devices can do and the big one is is that you can't allow recording right because otherwise that would completely defeat what hdcp is uh, is trying to prevent you from doing is you know create a high quality copy ndi makes it super easy to record stuff i mean it's in fact one of the native aspects of the ndi technology is the ability to record ndi feeds to disk a, a, a bit for bit exactly as they were with no recompression so um it, it I, I guess you know the the thing is is that anybody who makes a product that uh has you know the HDMI port on it, they are probably not going to be able to get it licensed to to work with those keys because the the company that you know they need to go to to do it is going to say sorry we're not going to let you you know make that product be a, a decoder or you know or accept it because then then they could record stuff. So, Conrad. Ready for go, ahead with, uh, go ahead with Conrad's. Uh, Conrad wants to know, uh, is, it, is it possible for Zoom to play nice with uh, TriCaster 8000 or for 10 with Advanced 3? If you want to take every pinned person from a Zoom call uh, as a source, how would one do that? I could handle that one easy. I do a lot of Zoom. And a lot of Zoom with TriCasters, uh, both on-premise and in the cloud. Unfortunately, at the position you're at, you would definitely want to take advantage of multiple systems feeding each Zoom person. So whether they be virtual machines, like you, I would do it in the cloud myself, or if you wanted to do even virtual machines or multiple laptops, multiple computers, in your control room, you could definitely do that. You would just basically pin or spotlight a person per machine. And then the wonderfulness of goodness of uh, NDI bring that back into your switcher. I would probably go more towards the 410 just because it's a little newer box and it has more NDI inputs, I believe, than the 8000. I believe the 8000 only has two, right, Kane? Well, it depends if it's advanced edition or not. So if, That's it's, true. if it's an 8,000 without advanced or, you know, standard edition, then it's got two. But if it's running advanced edition, then then technically it has 12. And I mean, yeah, most people use eight as SDI and the four as NDI, but there's no restriction on that. I okay. mean, just as a, an example, I mean, this is a Zoom call we're doing. I'm using a TriCaster Mini HDMI. <laughs> That's what's building this behind me. So it's, it's our lowest end TriCaster we make is what I'm feeding uh, my, my NDI into, putting this in and feeding it back out and going to Zoom. So you definitely can do it um, with, a, you know, uh, with, a, with an 8,000. Uh, just as you said, the model might determine how much you can bring in and out before you, uh, via NDI. All right, let's see. Uh, I think we may have answered Dan Shepard's question there, Tomiko, and uh, yep. so uh, Bill, Bill, yeah, go ahead. Bill Memes wants to know that, um, he says, is it the NDI and performance media networking class that was mentioned? This is something I'm interested in knowing about. Hang on, sorry. I just realized I posted the wrong. For those of you who saw the link I just posted, that was the wrong link I put in the. Uh, yeah, it uh, was a, it was cat videos. It was cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> now apparently I I must have not copied the uh, the thing, and still it's still the uh, the link to join the Zoom call that it, I just noticed. I'm like that doesn't look like a YouTube link. So let me let me try it one more time here really quick, and then I'll I'll try to answer. 
There we go. That there is that like link I just posted. There is like the correct YouTube link. link. Yeah. I, I made sure I hit Control C that time. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question once more? I, I with all Bill of this, says, didn't catch it all. Bill says, "Is it the NDI and performance media networking class that was mentioned?" This is something I'm interested in knowing more about. Yes. Uh, so um, I, I guess just to give a little on that because I actually created those classes. Uh, New Tech at the uh, early last year or middle last year, uh, we started up our uh, New Tech University program again. And um, you know, there's a bunch of classes that are available on there. Uh, and the NDI and Performance Media Networking is the main NDI class. So we talk about, we, we kind of make the assumption that you know some basic networking. So like that link I just shared for, you know, on the YouTube, if you don't watch that first, if you don't know some basic networking on there. But then in this class, we talk about, um, you know, how NDI works as a protocol, right? How it gets sent across your network and the different types of uh, communication cues. We talk about how to, uh, how to uh, find the kind of switch you should get and what kind of features you should look for in a switch, you know, because not everybody needs the same things, right? Some people might need POE, some people might not, but, you know, all the kind of things that go into making the proper selection in a switch and, and what kind of features in a switch should you look for so that you're probably picking something that is going to work uh, properly. Uh, we go really into depth in NDI tools. I go into aspects that, you know, uh, I've had people afterwards go, I had no idea you could do that. And I just literally tried to get into every single aspect uh, we could get into. Uh, another big one, we get into troubleshooting. So, you know, you're, you get NDI, but then things aren't working 100%, right? I select a source and it's black or I'm dropping frames. So we get into techniques to uh, and tools you can use to help troubleshoot your network, troubleshoot your connections, what kind of things to look for to fix those things. So uh, I think there's about six to seven hours of uh, class material in there, uh, if you were just to sit and watch it straight. Um, so it'd probably take you a couple of days to get through it all. Uh, there are some questions as you go through, but then uh, after that, if you want, there is an exam that you can uh, take and, uh, and that will, if you pass that, then you get a diploma uh, for saying you passed the course. And then ultimately, and I know Jeff is probably wondering when this will show up, but hopefully soon, um, there are actually two classes you can put together, uh, both that NDI class and another one called uh, infrastructure products. That one's a little more new tech specific, but if you actually take both of those classes and pass both of those exams, um, we will probably next month have going out, uh, you can actually get what's called a certification where you can, you can have, I I am a certified NDI network architect, right? Somebody who has taken these classes and they've shown that they know how NDI operates and uh, we'll be sending those, those uh, certificates out to people soon. We're, we're literally just getting them finished up now. So uh, the classes I are not free. Uh, you do have to pay for them, uh, but they are, um, they are, I, I mean, I guess I made them. So maybe I'll let somebody else speak to them, but I've got- They're worth every penny. They're worth yeah, every penny. Really good feedback from them. So yeah, thank you absolutely. guys for, for that. Can can Kane, can you can you drop a link to that so that uh, if people want to take advantage of your expertise? They sure, can I'll, I'll put a link to the main store page in there, <clears throat> and then uh, there there are a bunch of um, classes. So beyond NDI, there's also one on how to run a TriCaster, one how to run a three play. There's one on automation. I also have some free classes if you're interested. Like there's a free class in there about how to use NDI with. Um, meeting applications like Zoom and Teams, right? So if you're just like, I want to understand how to do that better, I have a free class on just that aspect alone. So, uh, you know, besides the paid one, there is some free content as well that you can look at. Well, I got to say, I mean, we're over our time a little bit here. I really appreciate everybody staying with us. We still, we still have about 40 people on, on the webinar, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, if you, if, does anybody have any more questions while we're here? And, you know, uh, just let me know. Uh, drop me an email, dan at bdo360.com. Uh, if you want to have another one of these and if you want to have uh, uh, more stuff going. John, you had something to pop in? Well, it's just going to pop in the end. If, if you haven't had enough Zoom conferences today, uh, it, at noon, there'll be the Zoom test kitchen. You can find out about it on uh, Facebook or do a search. And this is a group of people who try to help people test things out on Zoom and learn about it. And there are people there using NDI in the cloud, uh, connecting to Zoom calls and doing some fun things. So 
the question you answered your question about the TriCaster and how it could connect to Zoom. There's some fun things in the Zoom test kitchen with people using NDI in very creative ways. Oh, cool. Do you have, uh, you, you don't happen to have a link to that, do you, John? Not handy, but I'll, uh, I'll if, if, if you are in Facebook, if you just do Zoom test kitchen, you'll see it there. Cool. Good enough. Good enough. Hey, so we are recording this, obviously, and uh, I will, I will uh, make sure to send that to everybody that's registered. And of course, we'll have links and da da da, you know, all that, all the stuff. But um, one, first, I want to uh, express my appreciation for the panelists joining us here today. Yay! You guys are experts, and uh, without you guys sharing your knowledge. Um, our industry would be a much smaller place. And, you know, sincerely, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm available for, you know, uh, you guys at any time. If you ever need somebody that just doesn't know a lot about anything, you can, you can, you can tap me for <laughs> anything you guys want to do. I'm, I'm good for that. Um, I, I want to thank you for inviting me on this panel because I find out if you get invited to things with people who are smarter than you, people think you're smarter than you are. That's it. That's my point, <laughs> isn't it, John? Um, yeah. uh, I think there's just a comment from a uh, Anthony Brown. Yeah, go ahead. To to the new yeah. tech folks, uh, saying yes, we need more targeted information for systems integrators concerning installation, presentation versus the wealth of info in a production environment. Yeah, maybe uh, let's do that maybe for the next webinar. You know, if you guys want to you want to uh, do another one that's focused on the integrators, how they, uh, you know, everything from the very beginning and just interrogating the customer to uh, to finding out uh, what the what the IT environment is. You know, maybe that would be a, a good one to start with. Um, again, I just. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Tamiko. I, I said, I, I, I think I just found your Zoom test kitchen, John. Oh, and great. I popped the link there in the main chat. Yep, that's so, that's another Jeff. That's Jeff with two Fs. He spells it wrong, but he, he really does know his Zoom <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> did did my links make it in the general chat for everyone? I just I realized took, I only had... I took care on. of you. I got them okay, in there. Thank Don't you. Worry. I realized now <laughs> I only had the wrong thing selected in the list, so... <laughs> Yeah, I know That's technology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff, Jeff had your back on that one. Again, again. He popped me a question and he was just like, great, oh, I got it. This is one of our great webinars that we like to do, which are, are informational. I don't like to, to make them a sales pitch, but we do have a really cool camera. Um, you know, it does have to do NDIHX and I think it's uh, like $17.99 retail, so. You can get, uh, you know, high-end NDI camera that does not only NDI, but HDMI, SDI, you know, USB, uh, let's see, you know, it does the other IP stuff. Uh, basically, you know, anything you want to plug it into, it's going to work. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to do this webinar is because people are asking me, about this camera, why do you have all these different connections? This is one of the reasons I have all these connections. Uh, again, thanks again to everybody. I want to uh, uh, thank the panelists, you know, sincerely, and to let you guys let all the panelists know. Really, if you guys need something, I'm here for you. Okay. No problem. Um, thank let's you. go ahead, and we're going to stop the recording, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Great meeting everyone. Nice to meet everyone.